Hello listeners, welcome to our English program podcast Kaleidoscope. Listeners, in our today's program Master Architects of India, we have a discussion on life and works of architect Nari Gandhi. Nari Gandhi was an Indian architect known for his profoundly inventive works in traditional buildings. He was an architect known for his take on organic architecture and his architecture seeks inspiration from nature. To talk about Nari Gandhi, we have Nisim Sadolikar and Dinesh Hipparkar in our studio. Nisim Sadolikar is an architect based in Pune with an experience of about 16 years in practice and teaching architecture at Delhi, Goa, Mumbai and Pune. He is currently working at Symbiosis Skills and Professional University, Kewre, in School of Architecture as Associate Professor. Whereas Dinesh Parker is also an architect based in Pune with 27 years of experience in architectural designing and conceptualization of projects of varied scales. He is currently pursuing PhD from MIT University in Rajasthan. He has an inherent passion towards academics and is currently working as a professor at Symbiosis School of Architecture, Urban Development and Planning. So let us listen to the discussion on the master architect of India, Nari Gandhi. Hi Nisim how are you when did you come back from alibag hi dinesh just yesterday evening it was amazing you know we visited a very beautiful house there it has uniquely designed arches of varied shapes and sizes which support the entire house as load bearing elements and give a tremendously extraordinary experience of space and i can guess that the house was designed by none other than our nari gandhi sir You guessed it correctly. Do you happen to know his early years of life, Nipsim? Yeah, to a certain extent. His full name is Nariman Dosabhai Gandhi, although people fondly used to call him Nari. He was from a Parsi family, originally from Surat, but based in Mumbai. He was studying architecture at Sir J J School of Architecture till 1956, until he left the course. without appearing for the final exam you know he went to usa to work with frank lloyd wright there where he was mesmerized by works of frank lloyd wright based on the concept of organic architecture he got immersed in designing details about working with stone while he was working with wright after the demise of wright in 1961 he left wright's studio and went on studying pottery weaving ceramics photography wood carving at kent state university before returning to india wow fascinating indeed did he pursue his studies in architecture to get a degree when he was back home no <laughs> he never received a formal degree in architecture but he has designed almost 27 projects and most of them close to mumbai and lonawala interestingly he has done interior design for one of the flats in kanchanjunga apartments designed by charles korea dinesh what do you think of his architectural philosophy i was really waiting for that question from you nisim it is so inspiring to talk about his philosophy of architecture nari's works demonstrate highly skilled craftsmanship and structural ingenuity his works have a distinctive organic character His architecture seeks stimulus from nature. Most of his buildings in the countryside are expressions in precise structures to hold roofs up in conveying loads in unique ways. Hmm. Yes, I completely agree. His philosophy is evident in all his structures. I have also visited a beach house designed by him at Mud Island. The construction started in 1980s and went on for 10 years almost. You know it has vaulted stone arches rising up to 10 meters in height and each stone is around 3 meters of length and also 5 cm thick. This house has no doors you know and it has three cave like cells. First cell has living, dining and bedrooms. second has kitchen and bathrooms and the third has garage and servant quarters 
the stone is found in the form of broken chips glued to cement coated surfaces unusual materials and design touches appear throughout the building and the garden's glass skylight domes were made from broken glass chips marbles stained glass and broken bottles the house also contains several terracotta sculptures and pots many artworks in different medium ranging from earthenware metalware are placed there this house really has a rustic treatment and also a primitive cave like interiors yes i have seen this structure too the fascinating thing about nari is the typical material palette he uses in his structures most of his buildings have brick stone steel and timber as structural materials grey kota stone flooring polished teak wood ceilings slanting windows and leather furniture jaipuri chuna was used for walls paintings sculptures and pottery was used very extensively furniture pieces are normally low height it has organic dim lighting which is not harsh is another typical style of nari he also adorns his structures with terracotta murals hmm his choice of materials must be inspired from the early learnings he had when he was with fl right i remember one of his very talked about projects although i have not been there i have seen many screenings of this place it is in lonawla yes i know this place nisim it is a residence designed for mr jain in lonawla you know it has total 9 rooms a prayer room living room card room kitchen dining and four bedrooms the structure consists of stone masonry walls of varying sizes and colors it has a single large roof plane dotted with dormer windows and covered with manglo tiles internal courts on different levels are covered in transparent corrugated roofing sheets dormer windows overlooking the landscape around the bungalow also serve to visually unify this rooms the roof is supported by a steel truss it is a very very beautiful organic structure indeed dinesh i wonder how he manages the planning of such informal structures i think nisim the fusion of interior spaces to create transparency within a structure are obtained by means of geometry geometry was used not only as a means of organizing materials and spaces but i think also in the third dimension to give dynamism to the form and tension to the space geometry was underlying discipline of structure a primary tool for ordering and architectural form i have read about nari in one of the books where his client mr rustam mehta says nari pampered his workers too much there have been couple of stray incidents where the workers have taken advantage of the kindness and generosity of nari whenever he realized this he used to feel extremely hurt yes his close friend and client mr daya also has similar observations daya says his workmen were hardly specialized he personally trained these boys he instilled in them a passion for work and helped them to find their own creative threads carpenters masons they would really get addicted to his work hmm nari was very simple man sometimes superstitious about god also and other things in spite of having worked with a master such as frank lloyd wright he never mentioned it to anyone only when one asked him about that then to his answers would be in monosyllables one had to keep questioning to find out when how where etc a normal person would have told entire story on just asking about it but he was a man of few words he would only reply to what you asked him <laughs> correct you know nari had a love for traveling he used to collect watches cameras and pens he was an early riser from bed and would leave the house early in the morning whether there is work or no work he used to travel a lot and mostly his travel would be on various sites which were located in maharashtra and surat 
Nari had a very sharp eye to spot talent. He used to collect art for his clients. Often, people used to follow Nari at art galleries and if he paused at a painting for a long enough time, they would purchase it. This indeed was a recognition that Nari received from people around him. Yes. One of his clients from Surat Mr. Suryakan Patel used to say that Nari was a very frank person. If he did not like something, he would tell you straight away and so too if he liked something. This frankness has created problems with certain clients but then he believed that such clients were not worth dealing with for they did not understand him and his architecture. He did not even get along with his associates for long. Arvin Driver, Simran Sethi and Suresh Sethi were the only people who worked with him for long. Not many students also used to stay for long sessions. As said by Mr. Driver, some friendly arguments would take place. But everything was humorous. He would crack jokes constantly and make the atmosphere light and humorous. Yes, many of his colleagues and clients had an impression of his being rude and hot-tempered and a crazy individual. However, I'll tell you, he was a simple, gentle and ready-to-help kind of person. He would not charge any money for his friend Mr. Daya. When he was forced to take some money by Daya, he nevertheless used to take it but then donate the money to Mother Teresa's home for needy. Many people would take advantage of this nature that Nari had. Most of the time, he did not realize this. He actually was a really very simple man. As was Nari Gandhi, it was his work. Pure, gentle, direct from the heart. He required neither drawings nor a simple sketch for getting approvals by his clients. His clients would come to him with a lot of trust. If he got the essential character of his structures, it could not be by camera as it is wholly a matter of experience. Nari Gandhi always developed vegetation in and around the building side by side with the construction. The use of brick in Revadanda house, the hollow brick in the Korlai house and the use of terracotta pots as ceiling units in the Surat house show a deep understanding of his material. What Nari Gandhi's practice has done is to show that there is an alternate approach to design. Nisim, Nari Gandhi knew the limitations of such a practice and worked well within them. He did not take upon himself the task of setting trends in India architecture as do most architects do. Instead, he focused his energies towards his practice. A real Gandhian person. Though he worked with intensity, he could not cope up with the number of projects done by larger firms. Yes, the houses made by Mr. Gandhi are still as lively as they were when they were made. Some of his works are Gohai Mountain Lodge near Tungarli Dam, the first project of Nari after returning from America. Another was Parekh House for Asha Parekh. Walia residence of late Mr. Pranjivan Girdharla Walia, apartment of Mr. Rafik Tejani, the once owner of Metro Shoes, Jain Bungalow of Mr. and Mrs. Jain, in a bushy village near Lonaula, and many others. Correct. You know, in one of the interviews conducted by Adil Jussawala, which was way back in 1960s, 70s, he had said, I am more interested using local material. These are Nari's words. He used to say certain kinds of wood and stone rather than repeating the shape of yesteryears. I don't give much importance to this or that form. Light and air, forms and interior. This is very contradictory to what architects do these days. Nari used to say the air itself should come to life. Of course, Certain basic assumptions about form need to be questioned. Does a chair have to have legs? Can there be a saucer with a hole in the middle to hold the cup? People don't question the basicality of things enough is what Nari used to say. 
Yes, I remember reading about it. The author says, Nari Gandhi doesn't relish publicity, nor is he willing as an architect and a designer to reach a kind of compromises with his clients that led to anything other than what he believes is right. This might explain why an awareness of his work has been slow to grow in professional circles and why clients have been slow to come. There can be no lukewarm reaction to his work. It either captivates or repels. The works he has worked on so far contain such pieces as a three-dimensional mural of cotton reels on a stunningly simple fabric. Magnificent door details made of wood and glass and a controversial stairway seemingly designed to give its regular users a permanent limp. <laughs> That's true. <coughs> His client Mr. Sethi also says, and this is very important, he says, to understand his work, you should be free of all fears. That is such a philosophical thought, right Nisim? Yes. I will tell you, some refer to him as the Howard Rourke of India or the Robin Hood of architecture. He was not a person who would inspire in a first look. Daya, his friend, also believed that Nari did not look like an architect. He dressed very simply, he hardly spoke and was reserved by nature, completely contrasting to what an architect should be. Nari Gandhi always wore homespun cotton fabric which we call khadi. He wore khadi because he had his own reasons. He stated in an interview once that he wore khadi because it shows self-reliance. It is natural and feels free to breathe. He would speak so softly that you had to listen carefully to understand. All these characteristics are a true reflection of his architecture indeed. Nisim, we are fortunate to have all this information which is compiled in a website which was designed by Mr. Girish Parmar. We should be really thankful to him. Nari had an ultimate happiness, knowledge and realization on his face. You know his face is an absolute face. Nari's eyes were a true window for a soul. And unfortunately we lost Nari too early. Unfortunately in a tragic car accident. There are too many things to talk about Nari. But I think we will keep it for some time later. I would like to take your leave now and come back on this definitely later again. See you soon, Dinesh. We have to talk a lot. Sure. Thank you, Nisim. Bye-bye. So, listeners, that was a discussion on the life and works of Nari Gandhi, Master Architect of India. The participants were Nisim Sadolikar and Dinesh Hipparkar. Hope you enjoyed listening to them. We will be back next week with another exciting program. Until then, thanks for listening and please stay tuned as our next program follows.